Hey, pretty cool, huh? No, it's not another fidget spinner, don't worry. But what is it? Well, I'm going to the Matter Hackers meetup on May 3rd next week, and I heard they're making a giant Plinko board. Here it goes. So I suggested it would be super cool if everyone could make their own MakerCoin Plinko pucks and give it a shot on the Plinko and try to win some prizes. They thought it was a cool idea, so I whipped this thing up as fast as I could. Sure, it's nice to keep things simple sometimes, but with this particular project, I wanted to play around and see how many cool little features I could fit in. So of course, you can see the logo stays upright, which is super cool. And then this swirly pattern is actually a built-in flat spring so the puck will bounce a little bit more and hopefully make a better show when it's running down the Plinko board. And I also use flexible filament on the edges here to help with the bounciness and shock absorption. In order for this to work, all the pucks have to be the same size so that they'll all work on the same Plinko board. So those are the constraints. They have to be three and a half inches in diameter, half an inch thick, and the edge features can't be more than an eighth of an inch. So. Within those constraints, I wanted to see how crazy I could get, and this is what I came up with. I really like how it turned out, so I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I made it right now. Let's go. Of course, we wanna start by creating a model of what we're gonna print. So here I am in Fusion 360, and the first thing I'm gonna do is draw out a half profile of my puck. That way I can revolve it to create the full disc and get all those important dimensions in there. Since I'm revolving around the right side of my drawing, that rectangle on the left will become the elastic ring that goes around this whole disc. For the width, I'll give this whole sketch a dimension of 1.75 inches. That way, when it's revolved all the way around, the width will double to become the 3.5 inch diameter that we want this puck to be. I'll also include the height and make sure that all these details on the edge don't go beyond an eighth of an inch from the rim. Once we revolve that, we've got our nice puck shape with all the correct dimensions, and now we can just start adding all the little details and features that I want to add. So let's start with those flat springs. I sketched two circles, one near the center for the start of the spring, and then one on the outside to make sure it ends before it gets to the very edge so that we have a, a nice thick rim as well. Then I'll do a tangent arc from the inner circle to the outer circle halfway around, and I'll offset that to give it the thickness I want, and continue that arc the other way around so that it meets up with that circle again. Now I wanna create a pattern of several of these arcs going all the way around to make things a little bit stronger and just so it'll look cool. So I don't wanna cut it away, but instead I'm gonna make a new body with just that arc and I'll extrude it to be the same height as the rest of my disc. I'll make sure to save that as a new body and then I'll hide the puck for a minute and pattern this arc all the way around until it looks the way I want it to. We'll go with five instances, I think that looks really cool. And then I can use the combine feature to combine these all into one solid body. I'll also put some fillets here in the sharp edges to make sure that there's no high stress points that might break apart. Anytime you have a sharp intersection like this, a fillet is a good idea to relieve some of the stress that could concentrate in that point. Okay, so now to combine these arms with the rest of the body, I'm gonna go ahead and trace out that inner and outer circle again and I'm gonna use those circles as a split tool to cut my puck into three separate pieces. Once I've done that, I can select the middle ring and do an intersect command with that and the spring arms that I created. And when I combine that all back together again, I'm left with the shape I want. And this creates some more sharp points here on the outer rim, so we'll go ahead and apply the same one millimeter fillet on all of those as well. Next, I wanna add my emblem in the center but before I do that, I have to extrude inwards because I can't have any features sticking out or making the puck any wider than that half inch constraint anywhere along this design. So instead I'm gonna dip it inwards and then have the logo embedded inside of my puck. So I did that little tapered extrude and then I'll extrude a new disc inside of there which will be the separate logo part. All right, it's really coming together now. I have a good idea of how it's gonna look. Let's apply some different appearances so that we can just make it look a little flashier and get excited about what we're making. And then it's time to flip over to the back 
and start working on the mechanism to keep my logo spinning and upright. So to do that, I'll hollow out the back, make a hole for the bearing to fit into place, and I'll also design an axle to go through that bearing and hold on to this weight section on the back. Basically, I'm creating an off-centered weight here so that it's always drawn to the same orientation because of gravity, and that's gonna be connected to the logo so that the logo is always facing the same way as well. I'm also gonna separate the different parts that way I can print them with different materials and also so I don't have to use so much support material for all these different parts. I did finesse things a little more, but we're pretty much done here, so let's go ahead and take a look at the printed parts. Here's the main body printing out on my CR10 in this lovely Pro PLA from Matter Hackers. This is one of my favorite blues. And this piece actually did require some support material, so I'm gonna go ahead and pry that all out and reveal that hollow section in the back, which is gonna hold the weight. Here you can see that springiness that I built into the part. I printed the logo using a color swap and a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, so those triangles are nice and sharp and everything looks really clean. And then for the weight, I actually printed that using a protopasta copper fill, which makes it really nice and heavy. And this came out looking really beautiful, printed with the 0.6 millimeter Olsen Ruby nozzle. I printed the flexible part with some eSun TPU I had laying around. And while it's not super stretchy, it is flexible, so hopefully that'll work out. Finally, there's this little axle that will connect the weight to the logo. And then we have all our 3D printed parts. Add one ceramic bearing, and we've got all the parts we need. So let's start putting this together. First, we're gonna take the body and fit this elastic band around the rim. Like I said, this flexible filament wasn't super flexible, but it was just enough to snap it into place and have a really nice tight fit. Now we can assemble the spinning logo. So I'll stick my axle through the bearing and the other end is gonna connect to that copper weight. The logo will go on the other end here, but since I designed things so thin, I'm not gonna be able to snap it into place. I'm gonna have to go ahead and use some glue. So of course I'm going with my default E6000 adhesive and then I'll glue everything into place. You can see the logo is spinning, but not as well as I'd like it to. So I just went ahead and added some machine oil to the bearing and the whole disc, just so that things would spin a little bit more freely. I glued the rest of the parts and put everything in place. And then I just went ahead and spun things around to make sure that it stayed free and I didn't get any glue inside of the bearings. With a bit of fiddling, I managed to get everything spinning freely while still keeping all the parts flush with the sides of my disc. All right, there it is, my make anything Plinko puck. Like I said, I'm gonna bring this thing to the Matter Hackers meetup next week on the third. And if you're going, leave me a comment and it would be awesome if you made a coin for yourself to try out on the Plinko board. So I'll put the dimensions in the description. And even if you're not making it to this meetup, Matter Hackers is planning to bring their board to different events like Maker Fair. So it would be awesome if you made your own Plinko puck even if it's just for fun, we'd love to see what you make. So post it on social media, tag Matter Hackers, tag Make Anything, and uh, yeah, it's a fun project. So go ahead, try it out, and don't forget to stay inspired. Ciao.